We've learned a lot about acids and bases now, but what are they actually useful for? Acids and bases actually have a heap of properties which are important to both the synthetic and natural worlds of chemistry. For level 2, it's important that you understand how they relate to electrical conductivity, indicators, and how they can influence rates of reactions. You will hopefully remember that we define acids and bases by their ability to accept or donate protons. And if you remember this idea, it's not a far jump to recall that whenever an acid or base dissociates, it creates ions. These ions are hydronium or hydroxide ions, as well as the conjugate acid or base, which can often also be an ion. The fact that ions are created isn't just an interesting piece of trivia, but instead leads to a number of different properties possessed by acids and bases. You may recall from a previous topic that the condition necessary to cause effective electrical conduction is the presence of free charges that are able to pass on the electrical impulse. Well, isn't that convenient? The ionic nature of the dissociation of acids and bases means that they are actually able to conduct electricity. But to what extent? Are acids and bases good or bad conductors of electricity? Well, it varies. In fact, the ability of an acid or base to conduct electricity is directly linked to the strength of the acid or base. Let me explain why. Remember that the stronger an acid or base is, the more it will dissociate in water. The more it dissociates, the more ions are created. From here, it isn't a large jump to understand that the more ions there are present, the more potential there is to carry charge. And bingo, the better the electricity will be conducted. What about rates of reaction? A similar idea is at play here. Recall that the rate of a reaction is influenced by how many successful collisions are occurring. In an acid or base reaction, these collisions are caused by the acidic or basic ions formed. Therefore, the stronger an acid, the more ions are created and the more potential there is for successful collisions. This explains why a strong acid can dissolve metal, but we are able to safely drink citric acid, because a lack of collisions prevents the damaging reaction from occurring. Last of all, we should spend some time talking about indicators. In level 2, you use both litmus paper and universal indicator. But which is better? While litmus paper can certainly help you tell whether you are dealing with an acid or base, it can't tell you how strong it is. This is where universal indicator steps in. Instead of giving a black and white, or in this case, red and blue definition, Universal indicator operates on a scale. The more purple a compound, the more basic it is. And the more red, the more acid you are looking at. A green solution represents a neutral solution and something the bravest chemists could healthily consume.